In this video, we are going to learn how we can create some amazing looking advanced sliders in our WordPress website. So first we are going to create this simple slider where we have this image in the background and we have this call to action button. So this is best suited for an e-commerce website or any service based website where you want to showcase your product or services. And then we will create some advanced sliders like this where we have this video in the background and we have this text here and a call to action button. And if we move on to the next slide, we again have the same video in the background, text and call to action button. Along with that, on the left hand side, we have this image. If we click on this, we get a video pop up. So let's go ahead and see how we can create these kind of sliders in our WordPress website. So we will be building this slider by just using Gutenberg page editor using the plus add ons for Gutenberg. So here we are in our WordPress backend and if we go in the plugin section, here we have the plus add-ons for block editor free as well as the pro version. And once you install and activate both of these plugins, you will find the plus settings option here in the backend. And if we click on this and then go to plus blocks and in order to create these sliders, we will search for anything. And this is carousel anything block and this is the carousel anything block which we need to turn on and as you can see it's part of the pro plan of plus add-ons for Gutenberg. So make sure you have the pro version installed and activated and once you turn on this block we will click on save and now let's go ahead and create a page where we want to add these sliders. So we'll go to pages and then click on add new. Let's open that in a new tab and we will give this page a name. So we will call it Ecom Sliders. And let's go ahead and save the draft of this page. And now in the content area, we will type in TP row so that we can add a new row and we will choose one column layout and make this row full width so that we can have a full width slider. And here on the right hand side in the layout settings, we will check this stretch row so that we can have a full width row here. And after that, in the content width, we will choose full width content. Now we will click on this plus icon so that we can add new block in this row. So we will search for, so we are searching for this TP carousel anything. So we will click on this block. So now the block is loaded. And now in order to add slide in this carousel or in this slider, we have option here on the right hand side. So under layout tab, we have content. So here we can define our slides. So right now we have one slide added here. Here we can choose the title of this slide. So maybe we can type in E1. And after the title, we have option to choose the block template. So under this block template, it will list all the reusable blocks that you have created and you can combine all these reusable blocks in these different slides to make your complete slider. So before we choose any of these reusable blocks as the slide number one, let's go ahead and dive in in the list of these reusable blocks. So for that, we need to click on these three dots here in the corner and here under tools, we have manage reusable blocks. So if we open that in a new tab, so this is the complete list of all reusable blocks that we have created in this WordPress setup. And here you can see we already have three slides, Ecom slide one, two and three. Let's open this slide one. So we will click on edit. So this is the content under this reusable block, which is acting as our slide. So if we look in the list view, here we have a TP row, which is the main row of this content. And we have divided that into two columns. And on the right hand side, we have this heading and after that we have this button. And in column number two, we don't have anything. So let me just show you how we have designed this slide. So we are going to add a new row, let's say TP row. So we are going to choose a two column layout and then turn this row as full width. 
And here on the right hand side, we have the style tab. If we click here, we have an option to add a background. So we will choose a background image. Let's click here to add an image. So this is the image we are going to use. Let's select that. And now in the column number one, we will add some heading. So we will search for heading and we will choose TP heading block here. So once we have selected TP heading block, we have various style options for this block. So we can choose whichever suits best for our design. So maybe we will select this one and let's type in dog toys as main heading. And in the subheading, we will type in any text that suits the requirement of your slider and we can align this text anywhere we want. And if we go in the style tab here, we can define the typography as well as the color for this title. So let's say we want the font size as 40 or maybe 50. And in the color, we will choose, we will choose this color and same for the subheading. We have option here. So we will choose the font size from here and we will also select the color and now we can add some padding here. So we will select column and then we will go to advanced section and here we will add some padding on the top as well as in the bottom. And for this background image, we will choose the position as center center and the attachment will be default. And for the background repeat, we will choose no repeat and background size we will choose cover so that it can occupy the complete space in the slider. And after adding this padding, we can now go ahead and add a new button below this. So we will click on insert after and then search for button. So we are going to use TP button block. And once again, we can choose the style of button from these ready-made styles. So let's say we go with this one. And after that, we can assign any link here. So let's say we just type in a dummy link. You can change the text of your button. So instead of buy now, we can choose learn more, something like that. In the layout, we can align this button to middle as well. So this is how we can create content in this reusable block. And then we will use this as slide in our slider. So let's go ahead and update this. And now we will come back in our Ecom sliders page where we will select carousel anything block. And again, in the content slide section, we will choose the slide one. And in the block template, we will choose Ecom one as slide number one. And we will duplicate this. We will rename this to E2 and choose the block type as Ecom two to make the second slide. Let's duplicate this one more time and name it E3 and choose Ecom3 reusable block as slide number three. Now, as you can see, the preview is not available here, but you can see the preview by turning the backend visibility option on in each slide. So this is how the slider will look. But if we keep this backend visibility off, this is going to help optimizing our backend. So you can go ahead and turn it on or off depending upon your requirement. So once you have defined all the three slides, we can now move on to the next option that is connection. So this is a unique carousel ID that you can assign to this, which you can use to connect this slider or control this slider along with any other Gutenberg block. So this is an advanced feature and we will cover that in a separate video. And once that is published, we will link that in the I button above. So make sure you go ahead and check that as well. After that, we have extra options. So here we have some general option like overflow hidden random order. So you can turn them on or off depending upon your design and slider requirement. So now let's move on to the next step that is slide. So for this complete carousel, we can define how our slider will flow either in horizontal or vertical mode. So if we choose vertical, so now the slider will move in the vertical direction instead of horizontal, but we will keep it as horizontal for this case. 
After that, we have columns. So here we can define the number of columns for this slider. We will keep it as one and active slide. We can define which slide we want to show as slide number one or active once the page is loaded. So we will keep it as slide one. After that, we have next previous option. Here we will define one column. Here we can define how many columns we want to skip or move once anyone click on next or previous. So it's better we select one column. After that, we also have option to define column gap. So if you want to give some gap between your slides, you can do that from here. After that, we have the slide speed. So how fast we want to make our slide move, we can define that from here. After that, we have dots and arrows. Here we can define how this navigation dots will look. So the, there are few options that you can play around with. So I would prefer this one. So let's select this. If you want to turn that off completely, you can also do that by this option. After that, we have background color. So you can define the background color of these dots and you can also define how the active dot color will look. So maybe if we change this to any teal green color, so this is how the active dot will look. And below that we have on hover dots. So if you turn this on, the dots will be gone, but they will be visible once you mouse over on the slider. For now, we will turn this off. After that, we have option for arrows. So if you want to show left and right arrows, so you can do that from here, but I will keep it off for this case. After that, we have center mode. So if you want to show a slide a little bit popped out in center of the slider, you can do that from here. So depending upon your design, you can do that from this center mode. After that, we have extra options. So here we have option for autoplay, which is turned on right now. And we can define the speed of this autoplay. So let's make it around 4000. So now the autoplay speed will be around four seconds. And after that, we have draggable option. So make sure you turn that on to make the slider draggable, which is a good option for mobile devices. And after that, we have infinite mode. So you can turn that on and then the slider will keep on moving in infinite mode. After that, we have pause on hover. So if you want to pause the slider on mouse over, you can turn that on. And here in the advanced tab, you can play around with spacing, background, border and other advanced stuff that is common for all the plus blocks. So now let's go ahead and publish this page. So this is how the slider will look in the front end. And we can also use the mouse to make this slider drag from left to right. So this kind of slider is good for an e-commerce website or a corporate website. Now let's go ahead and see how we can create some advanced looking slider with a video background. So this is a video slider that we can create. We have this image on the left hand side. We have the content and a call to action button on the right hand side column. And we also have a video in the background and same goes with the next slide as well. Along with that, if we click on this image here, it opens up a video pop up. So you can link any video in this video light box. Now, in order to create this slider, we again need to create reusable blocks and then we will use those blocks as slides in our slider. So here we are back in our reusable block section. And here you can see we have two reusable blocks, video one and video two. Let's go ahead and click on edit and see how we have designed this. So if we open the list view to get a better view here. So first of all, we have a TP row. We have the complete row here. After that, we have two column layout. And on the left hand column, we have this video. And in the right hand side, we have all these text and the button. So let's go ahead and quickly recreate this block. So here we will type in TP row. We will add this row column. So we will choose two column layout and we will make this row as full width. And let me just go ahead and copy this block from here. On the right hand side, we will start with a paragraph and paste our block. After that, we will again copy all these blocks and paste it here. So after adding the content on this column number two, let's go ahead and add a video background in our complete row. So we will select the complete row from here. 
and we will go in the advanced option and here we have an option says deep layer here we have an option for creative background video and as soon as we select this option we have an option to select video source so you can choose a youtube video a vimeo or a self-hosted video so we are going to select youtube and here we need to paste the video id and here we have an option to loop this video and play as mute we can also choose a fallback image and after that we have option for different layers so in the top layer we select color so that we can add a dark overlay on this video so here in the background we will select color and then choose a dark color and then reduce the opacity as we want all right so now this looks good and after that we will add a video in this left hand side block so here we will search for tp video so this is the video block we are going to choose let's select that and once again we have this video preview here but we want this to be as a pop-up for that we need to check the settings on the right hand side under layout we have the source so we will choose it as youtube we will paste the video id after that we have player settings so here we can choose mute so you can play around with video controls and all and below that we have banner icon so we will choose custom layout and then we will choose an image so we will choose this image for this video block and if we scroll down we have an option to play on pop-up let's turn that on so now we have this image here and the video will only play as pop-up once we click on this image so if we click here the video will open as a pop-up so this is how we have created this reusable block and now we will use this complete reusable block content as our slide and here in the video slider page we have already added carousel anything block and once again for the content we have selected two slides in slide number one we have video slide one and in slide number two we have video slide two and if we refresh this in the front end this is how the slider will look we have the video in the background we have a video pop-up option here and in the same way we can create as many slides as we want so this is how easy it is with plus add-ons for gutenberg to create some amazing looking advanced sliders for your wordpress website so if you like this video then make sure you hit the like button and share this video with someone who wish to create some amazing looking advanced sliders for their wordpress website and make sure you subscribe to this channel because we publish two videos per week where we will show you how you can do some amazing things with plus add-ons for gutenberg as well as the plus add-ons for elementor so that's it for this one and i'll see you in the next video